Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I think you guys are going to find tonight's broadcast very, very fascinating. Got the revelation of this uh Ooh, about three o'clock this morning and uh, couldn't sleep. That happens quite often. I wake up three, four o'clock in the morning and then I just begin to pray and, and really get my mind on the Lord. And, and it wasn't about Jacob's ladder, although I taught on this not too long ago. I actually picked up some new things on this in the Hebrew language. Can't wait to share that with you. But we're going to be going into multiple areas. And so I'm just going to kind of share the scriptures that I'm going to be talking about with you. Of course, Jacob's Ladder, Genesis 28. That wasn't the premise of where I'm going to come at uh, from this on. I'm actually going to be coming uh, to you from the premise of a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Uh, now, this technically is speaking about family members. But I'm going to take you on another level with that, uh, and, and mainly because we have other scriptures that support it. We're going to be talking about the fact that your house, well, your own body is that house. It's the temple of the Lord. We're going to be looking over at Luke as well. What did Jesus, what was he talking about when he said, you can't add one cubit to your stature by just by your thinking? But yet he tells you to seek the kingdom of God. And if you seek the kingdom of God, then he said all the things, including the adding the statute to your uh, uh, statute to your cubic could be could actually become accomplished, believe it or not. And a lot of times we over we overlook what he talks about and how he talks about getting there. We're going to be looking at the Hebrew Matthew uh, as well, looking at this mainly because in the Hebrew Matthew we get some uh, verbiage there that you don't normally get over in the English language there. So especially because he talks about not being anxious or not being nervous is what it actually is in the Hebrew language for tomorrow, because tomorrow will be uh, will be nervous enough for itself. Uh, so we'll look at that from that aspect, looking at the uh, book of Proverbs, just another little insight from the, the point of view of the house uh, being that you are that house. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to, we're going to go back. We're going to get into Matthew there. Then we're going to get into Matthew uh, chapter 23, this is the one that's very important to me, and I've also got the Hebrew Matthew to back this up for me uh, so that I can share this with you. And that's where Jesus says to Jerusalem, because they were the ones that killed the prophets and the ones that were brought to him, and he's specific, specifically speaking about the Pharisees, he talks about their house being left desolate until they say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So I'm really wanting to take you on a deep dive into this tonight. So I really trust that it's going to bless you. Uh, and so let me get my phone on silent here. Um, so anyway, there, uh, I, I do want to, uh, um, uh, to, to really get into this with you and, and share this information with you. I want to go back to the picture, though, first about Jacob's ladder. And uh, every time we look at imagery, whether we look at the ladder, uh, it's also in the Hebrew language, it's a staircase. Uh, it can be a ladder or a staircase. But Jacob, as we know, uh, he's on his way to meet Laban, his father, uh, who would become his father-in-law over in Syria. And uh, while he's on his way there, he stops in where it would be later, the, the temple would be built later, where he lays his head on a, on a rock for a pillow rough way to have a pillow is for a rock, but he does. He lays his head, head on a rock, which I always can't help but think that just helps, just makes me think of Christ Jesus, that, that he is that rock, right? That he puts his head on the rock, um, which, oh gosh, I can go in so many different directions when I think of that. Even the destruction of Damascus, which I do believe is about to happen uh, because of all the accusations that are going on, the Israel's constant bombardment of Gaza, um, it's going to bring about more attacks from from Syria, from Iranian forces, the proxy forces there. Uh, we're going to see uh, fighting going on from Lebanon, etc. And as a result, Israel is going to bomb Damascus into oblivion. And remember, as I've taught you guys before, he said, you're not mindful of the God of your salvation and you have, for, or, or you have forgotten the God of your salvation and you are not mindful of the rock. That shows Christian and Jew together. And I say Jew not in a disrespectful way. In other words, the Jewish people, 
the house of Judah, that comes against Damascus, who had became a fortress, a protection, in other words, for what? Ephraim. Ephraim being the house of Israel that had believed that Jesus Christ indeed was the Messiah. So remember that rock. And there Jacob lays his head on the, on the rock there as a pillow. Uh, it's not really the angle I'm going at with this tonight. We're looking at this more so in the aspect of Jacob's ladder was actually in a dream and it literally speaks of the mind. And, and, and that's what I'm wanting to focus on with you because so many things go on with inside of us. It's like your mind, your own brain. I don't know if I'd say the brain. It's kind of like an in-between place. It's where the spirit is, uh, uh, you know, where that spiritual connection that we have inside of us is what connects us straight to God. Um, and, and so I want to look at Jacob's dream here. Let's take a, let's take a quick look here. We're in um, uh, chapter 28 of Genesis. Um, uh, uh, we don't need to go to reading this in Hebrew. It's not going to do anybody else any, any good to read it that way anyway. And Jacob went out uh, uh, from Beersheba and went towards uh, Haran. Uh, and he lighted upon the place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And by the way, I, I know that uh, 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 Chris had mentioned the other night that, that he was actually, uh, that, that Abraham was Arabic. Uh, technically, he was Persian, if because if, he wasn't actually from Iraq. He was actually from a place on the border of Iran and Syria, uh, which back in those days, it wasn't the way it was anyway. But uh but nonetheless, uh, he was more of a Persian than he was anything else there. A little, little bit different there. Arabia is where you get the Arabs from, or, or the name of uh, the Arabs. But, uh, but it's a little technicality. It doesn't really matter at this point here. Uh, I really appreciate some of the things that he said with us there. Just really helped uh, bring some light to issues that are going on. Anyway, he lighted upon the place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, all right, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, okay, and the top of it reached to heaven. Now, here we go right there. Mutzav, Mutzav Ha'aretz, excuse me, Mutzav Aretz, not Ha'aretz, but Aretz, okay? So, the, uh, the, and the head of it, it's literally not even the top, it's the head. The uh, Rosho and its head, literally it's its head. We get that the Rosh is the head, okay? Its head, or his head, you could even translate that as his head, and his head which I think would be more appropriate, especially the way we're going to be looking at this. Magia comes from the root of that is uh, Gia, or uh, Nagi. Nagi actually is the root of the word that we would have here, uh, but it has the, the mem in front of it, which would mean like from. Uh, it literally means his head was touching. That's literally what it's saying there. His head was touching the heaven. Okay, now, but it's actually a feminine. And I thought that was interesting to note as well. Normally we read Shemaim for heavens, uh, but Shemayama, that's a little different in the verbiage there. And I mean, this is just a conjecture on my part. I can't say that I'm right on this, but I feel like it has more to do, almost like you would say in Christianity, we talk about being there, there being the bride of Christ, the feminine aspect of it there. So his head was touching the heaven. And behold, the angels of God, Vehine Melachai Elohim, Olim Ve Radaim Bo. And they were ascending and descending on it. They're ascending and descending upon what? Upon this ladder. But the ladder is in his head. 
and in his head it touches heaven there. And behold, he stood beside him, and behold, the Lord stood beside him, and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, the fa thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon you, you lie, to thee will I give it, and to your seed. Think about that for a minute, right? I mean, really think about that for a minute. Ani Yehovah, Elohai Avraham ve'avicha ve'elohai yaksak ha'aretz asha ata shachav elia lecha otna lazriach. Lazerach, okay? Ula zerach. Lecha, lecha. Okay, he said, I'm going to give it to you and to your seed. Now, I don't know if you guys know that, but that's singular. Uh, lecha, he gives it to him. He gives it to Jacob. He said, I'm going to give it to and for your, there's that singular again, your seed. Now, I've proven by the Dead Sea Scrolls, because when Tovia Singer tries to tell you that, oh, he makes fun of it, you know, like Paul was stupid. He didn't know that there is no such word as seeds, plural. There didn't, it doesn't exist in the Torah. Yes, it does. All right? Zarim. And it's there. And believe me, it's there. It's written in the Dead Sea Scrolls for sure. All right? So, yes, it is. There is a plural form for it. So, no, Paul knew exactly what he was talking about. But what's important to note here, though, is he's going to give the land whereon he was laying at to him, to him and to his seed. Friends, he isn't talking about a physical land. He was showing you the route, the connection. I mean, because let's face it, the seed would be the Mashiach, the Messiah. And you're going to see that connection, especially when we get into the part where Matthew, where Jesus says to them, your house is left unto you desolate. And it actually, in the Hebrew Matthew, he says your houses, their individual houses are desolate until you say, Baruch Moshienu. Blessed, because in the Hebrew, it's, blessed is our Savior. It's actually the best way to even go with that is blessed is our salvation. In other words, the connection is the Holy Spirit in you that will connect you. The house, their house becomes desolate because they didn't believe on the one who was there to teach them. All right, now let's look at Hebrews. You got to think deep with me, friends. This is not this is not skim milk. I promise you that. We are in the book of Hebrews, chapter three. We'll just start right there with verse one, just so you can see. Let's take a peek up there. There we go. Hebrews chapter three. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Wow, look at that right there. Partakers of the heavenly calling. I mean, I didn't even think about that when I was doing this here, right? The ladder, the head of the la of, of his head reaches up into heaven. And then Hebrew says, the heavenly calling. <laughs> oh, wow, I love it. Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Look, I got to stop for just a second. I know in my heart, somebody, and, and I'm not, I, I don't like the way these preachers do that kind of stuff where they say it on TV or whatever. And like, oh, glory to God. I know somebody out there has got heart trouble. Some, I, I, I don't, there's so many people, people that got heart trouble out there, ain't funny, or, 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 or cancer or whatever the case is. You know, they just say that nonsense to say it. But I know in my heart, this, this is a tough message to catch. And I don't want to pass this little part right here without making sure you really get it. Because somebody I know in my heart 
Um, this, this, is, this is a little bit deep right there. So let's just, I want to slow down for just a moment. All right. And I, whoop, I want to make sure you see that. Let me just, let me highlight it like that. Okay. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. I never saw this before either. Okay. That's why I wanted to stop. You're, they're partakers of the heavenly calling. And then if we look back at Jacob's ladder, see, and he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. Now, uh, let me explain to you that earth part. You remember in Genesis where God formed man of the dust of the earth? Remember that? Let's, let's take it. Let's go back there and just look real quick. I think it's very important. All right. Uh, there was no man to till the ground, right? But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Et ha'adama afad, mean ha'adama. Okay? Adama is the earth or the ground. And a man became, a, okay, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay, that's that's right here. Ve ipak bepaav nishmar chayim. Okay, that breath of life right there, friends, comes from the tree of life. Jesus Christ is the tree of life. It's the Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus breathed on the apostles after his resurrection? He said, "Receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost." He was showing that he was the same God that breathed into the nostrils of Adam. Or maybe I should say it this way. It was his breath, his chayim that went into Adam. And Adam, though he becomes a lenefesh chaya, that is literally, that word right there at the end is a singular of this word right here. But how could that be a singular if God breathed into his nostrils a plural. Because not all the Holy Spirit that was breathed into Adam was for just Adam. Remember, Eve was in that body as well. So she didn't have to have anybody to breathe into her when she was formed separately because she already had the Holy Spirit. Okay? But that ground, that's where I wanted to come back to. Let me go back to the ground so I don't lose you here. Et ha'adam, ha'adam, afar, min ha'adama. And he formed, God formed the man. Actually, Jehovah Elohim formed the man from the dust of the ground, the earth. All right, that's where it was. And by the way, here's that tree of life right there in verse 9. See that tree of life? So you can just look at it in English and see what he's talking about. He had the breath of life. There it is. The word life is what we're looking at. The tree of life. So the breath of life has to be from the tree of life. And here it is right there. Chaim. Right? Just like up here. Chaim. Look at there. Both places. I don't know if I can separate that one or not. I guess not. Not, not that. I, let me do it like that then. I'll do it like this. And then I'll change the color to let's do let's do blue because blue is like the sky. And then we'll undo that one. We'll come up here, make that blue. I wanted. I'm just really and and I hope I don't want to. I'm not trying to make it look like you guys don't know what you're talking about, but it's to make sure you really see that. See that blue there on both on both of them there see what is that blue that blue is the life one is from a tree see and an interest in you ever think about it why is it called the tree of life do you know jesus actually hung on the olive tree according to uh, uh some of the documents that were found in egypt that uh, he's actually was hung on the very tree that his father that joseph planted and grew and they claimed that that was the tree that was cut down and the wood was used from that tree there to make the cross that he hung on. I, I don't know. But there again, 
Why? The Eitz Chachaim. Uh, it, it, is, it is the tree of life, and that's what's breathing in the nostrils. But the important part, though, is from that earth there. But there went out a mist from the earth, okay? Ha'aretz, there's your Ha'aretz right there. Min Ha'aretz, okay? And to water all uh, Pene, the face of the Ha'adama. Okay, so the earth and the ground are basically synonymous. That's really what I was trying to get you to see there. Okay, so when we look at Jacob's ladder, Jacob's ladder um, set upon the earth. So in other words, you could actually look at that, Mitzav, Mitzav Ha'aretz. Jacob is a part of the earth himself. That's the point I wanted you to catch in that. He is part of that earth. Okay, Jacob himself is part of that earth as well. And therefore, that's why we read next. And his head touched the heavens. So even though we have a ladder there, that's it's almost, if you were to say it, if it doesn't sound sacrilegious to say, it's like his his own mind was the gateway that connected through his soul, through the, through the connection of the Holy Spirit, is what connected him to heavenly places. And thus, angels would ascend and descend, messengers. No wonder why prophets would have visions and things like that. And, uh, and believe it or not, that's kind of the way it works. All right. So then when we come over here into Hebrews, that's why I say it's so fascinating to read this right here. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Why? Why the heavenly calling? Because if you're connected with the latter like Jacob, then from your own heart, you might say, uh, the word head is used in Hebrew, but from your head, in other words, the Holy Spirit within you is connecting you directly to heaven. That's why it's a heavenly calling. I hope that helps. Who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Let's let that one soak a little bit, right? Moses... They, they put was well, faithful. It didn't say that. It Who was faithful to him that appointed him also as Moses and all his house. It doesn't say was faithful. It just says in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses insomuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. See, you, you, when you read that about Moses being that he was faithful, uh, you know, in all his house, you're fixing to find out it has nothing to do with everybody around him. It's about him, inside of him. He was faithful. In other words, within him, he was pure. He believed God unconditionally. There was no unbelief within him. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about, faithful in all his house. In other words, inside of his being. You'll see that. Watch it. You'll see it, right? For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. As Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony to those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ is a son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? Now you see what the house is. You are the house. You are the temple of God. You are the house of God. Okay? Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear his voice... Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Notice that. Harden not your hearts. You remember the scripture? I think it's in the book of Proverbs. I think well, I actually have it up here, I believe. Uh, let me see. 
No, it's not the one I was thinking of. Uh, but anyway, as a man believeth in his heart, so is he. And that's only part of the verse. But as he believes in his heart, so is he. There you go right there. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Why? It's within your house. As in, the, as in the provocation, the day of temptation in the wilderness. Now, the point I'm getting at here, I'm first wanting to establish that within you, within your own mind, in your own heart, your own thinking, this is where the battleground is. This is where people wage wars. But it, you don't want it to be a battleground for warrior. You want to just flat out believe God. You want to be like Moses, faithful in all your house. Inside of your mind, you want everything faithful to where you don't question God. You believe every word that God has to say. Okay? When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Where did they err? They erred in their heart. It's, the thing is, is what you allow in your mind. And when you allow doubt and unbelief to creep in there. Then those things will begin to materialize in you. This is why they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus even said, except that you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. He didn't say, I am he. He said, except that you believe that I am. Except that you believe, you will die in your sins. That's what he told them. And they couldn't believe that. Why? They had allowed the doubt to enter into their mind and question if thou be, see, that's where it is. Watch it. If thou be the son of God, come down off this cross and then we'll believe you. If they had only done like the centurion had done, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word. Wow. What a difference, right? Luke. <laughs> I, I love this one here. This is this one in black is actually speaking about not being able to add, add one stature to your cubit. Now watch what he says. Though. If you then be not able to do that thing which is least. By the way, it is possible. That's the whole point he's going to make in this, right? Let's look at this real quick. Life is more than meat. We're in uh, Luke chapter 12. And the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. How much more are you better than the, than the fowls or the birds? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Now, he wasn't saying that it couldn't be done. He was just asking them, which one of, which one of you can do it? The reason I'm going to prove that to you in a moment. Because Jesus said all things are possible to them that believe, right? He didn't say, well, this one's not. He said all things are possible. So you got to pay attention to what he's saying here. Which of one of you with taking thought can add to a stature one cubit? And if you then be not able to do that thing which is least, that was the simplest thing you could do is to be able to, with your own thought, add another cubit to your stature. I never thought about it like that before, but that's what he says. Why take you thought of the rest? Wow. Now he's really making a bold statement. Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like one of these. 
If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast to the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Jesus only says things about little faith when you can't do it. Okay? Let's, let's go a little further with it. And seek not you what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Neither, you, neither be you of a doubtful mind. That's important. Don't have a doubting mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you have need of these things. But rather... Seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Remember when Jesus told his apostles when he sent them out, he said, don't take a purse and don't take any script with you. Just go. The laborer is worthy of his hire. And when they went, when they came back, they weren't lacking a single thing. If they had need of food, if they had need of money, if they had need of lodging, no matter where they went, everything they had need of was taken care of. Fear not, little flock. <laughs> For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Remember too what he said to the Pharisees, the kingdom will be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruit thereof. That's why I said we're moving into that realm right now. Matthew 24. And I'm just going to pop it up on the screen. This is something you guys really need to remember and hold on to this. I'm already seeing it unfold. The kingdom is going to rise against kingdom. There it is right there. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We know the Pharisees held the kingdom when Jesus came on the earth because he said the kingdom would be taken away from them and given to a nation bringing forth fruit. So if the kingdom is against the kingdom, and we know, according to Nehemiah Gordon and many other Jewish rabbis that will tell you that the kingdom, or excuse me, that the Pharisees, that the Orthodox community of today have to be able to prove their lineage all the way back to the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago in order to be an Orthodox rabbi. And that's the ones who are pushing Netanyahu to take control of the power of Israel. Remember they asked Jesus, when are, 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 is this time, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it's not for you to know the days nor the hour or the time or something to that effect there. It's because the day of Pentecost was when that was going to be fulfilled. And it's when you were filled with the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom has come unto you. And it was given unto them. And it's what brings forth fruit when you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? So keep that in mind. All these are the... All right, now watch this here. And there shall, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Just showing you the time frame. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. As you see the kingdom, the true believers filled with the Holy Ghost, 
and the Pharisees are trying to get back in power and reestablish the state of Israel and claim that Jesus wasn't the Messiah and that they've got a new Messiah, they're bringing back, they're trying to bring back the old kingdom. There becomes a clash of the two kingdoms. But sadly, the ones that get offended are the ones that are supposed to be part of the kingdom of Christ. But no doubt, never filled with the Holy Spirit. Much like the Jews of 2,000 years ago, their own houses are desolate. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Just like I showed you the other day about Jehoshaphat when he asked for another prophet. And, and, and Ahab uh, had um, uh, Micah come up, the son of Emlam. But they already had 400 of them out there all prophesying with one accord. Micah comes up and says just the opposite. One guy out of 400. Well, that's what they have now. Many false prophets arise and, de and they're deceiving the masses like you wouldn't believe. And because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's what's happening. That's why it's very difficult to get people to believe the truth anymore. So anyway, we come back over here. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Notice what he says then. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old. A treasure in, in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's amazing. Because when you truly believe God, you're not going to have a lack. So you can take and sell what you have and give to the poor. You can do everything you want to help others because when you believe God, you're not going to lack no way. Think about what he's saying. Let your, let your, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. I love it. I absolutely love it. Hebrews, excuse me, Hebrew Gospel of Matthew. I'm sorry. Now, uh, we'll go back to this one here. Let me see. There was a reason why I wanted you to see that. Um, yeah, who among you of those who are anxious is able to add to his height one cu cu cubit? In other words, who among you, the word actually in Hebrew for anxious is nervous. This case, why are you so nervous for clothes? Behold the lilies of the uh, Sharon, that is, Gileon. But I say to you that the King Solomon, all his glory was not clothed like, like these. You're nervous about what you're going to wear and stuff. Always worry. Everybody's nervous because of the wars and, and rumors of wars and things like that. He said, don't be, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Let's continue on. I, I'm, I'm hoping this really sinks in. In Proverbs, I'll just quickly go over this one here. The Lord will pluck up the uh, pluck up the house of the proud, but He will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the uh, the thoughts of wickedness are an abomination to the Lord. Notice it's thoughts; it's what's in your head. But words of pleasantness are pure. Now, you remember how Paul says, "Renewing your mind daily." I need to pull that one up. We'll, we'll come right. Let's finish reading this, then we'll come back to it. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. What house? He's troubling his own self. The heart of the righteous studieth to, uh, studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. All right. Let's, let's take up oh, wrong one. Okay, east sword is what I want there. It makes it easier to find it. I, I should have had this up already. Renewing. I think that's the way it's written. Romans 12, 2. Let's see. I think so. And I think I can make this bigger. Yeah, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. By the renewing of your mind that you may, may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm, I love it. 
Now, let me read verse 1 to go with it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, because you're the house of God, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What, what does he mean by renewing of your mind? Every day, making sure you don't have doubt. You don't go around questioning. You go out, you go forth with your mind believing. You know, the scripture says you believe that you receive. You, you, uh, how's, it, how's Jesus said? You know, um, I think of the one too. You ask, ask, you have not because you ask not. You ask not because you believe not. You don't have to be that way though. You want to believe. All right, and I was, I was actually thinking of another scripture there, and I forget what it was now, but it's all right. Uh, and you guys, I know know most of these anyway. All right, let's let's move on. Matthew chapter ten. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You might think that right there is talking about your mother-in-law, father-in-law, and everything like that. No, it's what's in your mind about them. And a man's foes, they of his own household, not shall be, they of his own household. Now, technically, maybe he is talking about specifically your family members as well. But I guarantee you one thing, you can apply it as well to what's inside your own mind, your own foes, the enemy that you create within by doubting and disbelieving God's word will cause all the variances against your father and your daughter and against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. It can create every bit of that as well. All right. He that loveth. OK, we already read that there. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. He that receives you and uh, receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Whoa. Remember what I showed you guys the other day? God said, in that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. See, it's God inside of you. And if you let Christ with the Father living in you, controlling everything about what you think or do, you'll become an invincible army. He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth the righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. In other words, if you receive Christ and the Father that's in him, in you, believe me, you've just received God and the anointed spirit of Jesus Christ within you. The very one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that created Adam, the one that created everything that you can see and everything that you don't see is now living within you. Imagine then, what you have at your disposal. Mm. All right. right, let's. We're getting close to the end here. Almost done now. This is why I wanted to sum it up about Jerusalem. Jesus already warned you. Look what he says about the Pharisees. He says, you serpents, you generation of vipers. This is the Pharisees, friends. You don't believe it? Look up here. Here, where are we at? Let's back it up. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup, that the platter, the outside of them may be clean also. And that's another one right there. Clean up your mind. Get all the negative unbelief out of your head. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto a whited sepulchers. All they do is hold dead man's bones, right? 
which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but were then dead men's bones and all uh, and of all uncleanliness. Even so, you also outwardly appeared righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers of, uh, uh, with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. You serpents. You generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Archaeus, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Not, watch what he says next. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto you. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings. And you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Remember, we've already established the house is their own personal being. Their mind, as Jacob established, their mind was that connection to heaven. Basically, I would say their heart. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, you're connected back to God. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. See, Jacob was able to see God because he was connected he laid there in Jerusalem, not because of a temple, but because he realized his own head. That was the way he describes it. He was able to touch heaven. And remember, God spoke to him. God stood beside him and spoke to him. And now we're way over here into Matthew. Jesus says, you'll not see me henceforth. To you shall say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I want to read to you that in Matthew to prove this part about the house, though. It says here in verse 38, Therefore you will leave your houses desolate. Okay? And in the Hebrew, sure enough, verse 38, Bayatechem. That doesn't want to highlight it for me. It never does when I want to highlight a certain thing. Okay. One, two, three, fourth word over. Fourth word over. Bet, tav, yod, chet, excuse me. Yeah, chet, mem, sofit. The bet, tav is bayat for house. The yod right there makes it houses, plural. And then, of course, their houses. So their houses are going to be left desolate. So it wasn't talking about the temple. He's talking about them as individuals. They're desolate because why? They don't have the Holy Spirit. But he says, truly I say to you, you will not see me henceforth unto you will say. And in Hebrew he says it. Baruch Mosheinu. It's not going to highlight that either. Blessed is our Savior. They won't see Him until they bless the Holy Spirit that is able to come upon them. And then they will become anointed of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Then their eyes will be opened. So every Jewish person, I even watch how some people try to witness. I thank God that they're witnessing. I'll just say it that way there. But there's a depth of understanding that the Jewish people need to hear that they're not hearing. 
And this is why so many of them are still blind, in my opinion. They need the depth. They need that real, not, not that you have to go deep, but the simplicity of why Christ really came. Then they can receive the Holy Spirit. I'm Stephen Benoon. I really prayerfully trust this is a blessing to you. Uh, please visit our website. And as God lays it upon your heart, and I know he will, uh, contribute to the work we're doing here. We greatly appreciate it. And our mailing address, to Noon Institute, P.O. Box 156 Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. And also, uh, which I'll be home in Tennessee this coming week anyway, So, but you can click here and donate directly online, which is really the fastest way to be able to do it. It doesn't matter what kind of credit card you have. Any credit card works. And we thank you for that. Um, I'll just real quick look to see too if EMP Shield is still running their Labor Day sale. Sometimes they are. Um, you know, so if uh, it's on your heart to want to do something, especially to bless someone in your family uh, with an EMP Shield, because I do believe we're at a time period where it would really be needed. Yeah, they are. It looks like they're still running their special there. That's always the best time to buy. I like to really do that. I, I don't speak about it as much but yeah when i see them uh, nope nope i apologize i do not they're not running the special now so that's passed but you still save 50 dollars on the on the product i'm sure they're going to do a thanksgiving day special as well seems like every holiday that comes along they always do a promotion uh so if you want to wait till then that's fine but if not get one while you can uh because could be in a situation before we know it where it makes it tougher for that to get to you. Uh, so anyway, think about that. Think about your loved ones, your family, your grandchildren, your children, etc. If so maybe they don't have the ability to do it and you could do it and help them out, I'm sure that would be a blessing for them. God bless you. Thank you for listening. By the way, the reason why I did not load that video on EMP Shield as of yet, when they attacked my computer, like I said, they messed up a lot of the things that deal with what I am able to create, make videos with. And even my card reader was totally disabled. I did get a new one, so I'm hoping to be able to get the video put together here this week. Uh, it's a little bit harder right now this week, uh, but, uh, but I will be working on that. And hopefully by the end of next weekend, I keep promising that. But I, it's... It's, I think it's important because some of the information that we did and we filmed up there is very important. I think you'll really appreciate that information. Thank you for listening. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and God bless you.